Hello people, I'm Zoltra, and today we're going to be uh, doing something that we haven't done in quite a while actually. Origami. Today we're going to be making an origami mantis. This origami mantis is my own design and pretty much I don't know how I made it. It just happened but then I remembered it and I was like, oh yes, now I know how. And so now we're going to make it today. Uh, a small announcement I'm going to make is that this is probably going to be my last uh, origami video. Uh, on this channel unless you guys really want it or unless you know it somehow gets popular in the future but you know I feel like you know origami isn't the best thing it kind of suits my channel so I might um I might still continue origami but it'll be later in the future and there'll be much less origami on my channel so without further ado let's start so as you see here I have an A4 piece of paper that's because if you still on Instagram I've kind of cheated with the legs I used a small chunk of this paper to create the legs of this mantis, which is why it's not attached and you also need some glue tech. So yeah, what we need is just a paper, something to cut it with, and some sort of adhesive. Doesn't really matter what. So let's start. First thing you want to do is create one big square and leave that rectangular piece on its own. So you want to take this edge here and bring it onto this edge. Now, a note to say with this origami model is that it takes a lot of pre-folding for a medium design. It's a medium design because it doesn't really use that much, um, you know, a lot of that, like, it doesn't have a lot of folds. But overall, it does have a lot of um, pre-folding as if it was a heavy design. Anyway, so now that we have this, you want to just take this small flap here and bring it underneath, like so making sure it aligns with this edge here. Cool. Now you want to unfold that and now we want to take whatever we're cutting it with and cut it along that line to create a um, square. It's easy to go like this with the bigger side on top so then you know how to align it. As you see, that was not a really neat cut by me. I have to rip these tiny pieces off. Done. So now that we have this piece of paper, we want to unfold that. Here is where we're making the mantis head, arms, and body, but not the legs. So yeah, we'll start by taking this corner and bringing it up to this corner. Now what I want to make sure is make sure that the creases are very neat and strong. I actually made an attempt on this fold, um, on this model yesterday when I tried to record everything and geez it went so wrong and since it took so long because everything went wrong, I had no space on my iPod so I'll try to do this as quickly. So I'm sorry if I'm rushing, uh, just feel free to pause it because yeah, you, you shouldn't be missing too much. Now that you have this, what you want to do is fold it horizontally, basically like this. Making sure that the bottom edge touches the top edge. And do it again with this. Now that we have this, we kind of want to choose two sides. One side is going to be the head and one side is going to be the tail and the other two sides are going to be the arms. Um, in this case, I'm going to use uh, just this one as the head, this one as the tail because why not? Uh, what I want to do with the side that's your head, the square that's your head, you want to take the adjacent edges here and bring them into the center like so. You could unmove this so then you can see the creases a bit more properly. Mm -hmm. 
Alright, so now that we have that, you want to unfold. Now, what you want to do is take these three corners and bring them on to the center. Now you could use these horizontal lines as a guide to where you're going to put the creases on. So it's going to align like so. making sure it's all good. So now what I want to do is you want to uh, unfold those. Now what we need to do is take these two edges and bring them in onto the horizontal line like this. So pre-creasing, uh, pre sorry, is probably going to be the most time consuming part of the entire design because if you don't do the pre creasing it's really hard to get all the folds in in the folding part uh, unlike some other designs where the folding is the majority um, but once you do all the pre creasing the rest of the uh, modeling and folding becomes really easy now what you want to do is now you will have to make this a double smaller so what I mean by this is we have this like one, and then we're going to make that into a smaller. So basically, taking this corner and bringing it out to the edge. You could use the creases to align. You just want to keep making this smaller basically. Now you want to take this edge and bring it into the center. I'm sorry if I'm kind of rushing it. Just follow the visual representation. Usually I can um, afford to uh, commentate all of it and ha explain it, but with this, it uh, it's a long build, so and my iPod will definitely run out of uh, it will run out of space. So yeah, we're going to be doing that with all of these three corners. Just making sure we have something like this. And the top one as well. Good job. Now you have this. You kind of want, now you have to make it smaller again. So basically, uh, sorry, making sure that now, just to remind you, make sure you do these strong creases because you really will need them in the future. Uh, we have to make them smaller again. So what I mean by that is, well, pretty much what I did last time, but again, this side goes up, to create something smaller. You bring it out, bring that into the center. Bring it out, in and onto the edge. And also on the edge, you want to turn that over and bring it into the center. Now do it again, but this time on this side. So this, bring this onto the edge, and then bring it onto the center. Uh, a good way to remember it is just edge, center, edge, center. Pretty much it. Uh, the reason I haven't done origami in a while is because we moved house, and so the setup is kind of weird, basically. We haven't got everything, uh, well, we do have everything prepared, but it's not the same as before. 
Um, the table that I'm using is not the old table, it's actually different. It's a lot shorter and now my neck hurts a lot. And I remember how much my neck hurts from yesterday because I kept looking down for so long. Okay. So yes. Uh, and so here we go. Let me uh, fix the camera and I'll be right back. Alright, so we're back. Uh, we were at folding the two arm pieces into the center. Now what I want to do is do the same thing with here, pretty much making it all smaller. So we could uh, fold using our old creases that we made a while ago, make sure that we could crease these back on. Down, up, down. Also, if you follow me on my Instagram, you can see on my story. It was really frustrating yesterday, getting all that editing and stuff, all for nothing. So I have to retry it all over again today. Uh, like I said, you want to uh, make this smaller again. Uh, you don't have to focus on these uh, two smaller parts because uh, we could keep that as crease. Uh, you just want to take this uh, edge on the tip of that diamond and bring it into the second edge down here. Like so. Alright, now you want to flip that over, bring it back up, flip it over again, and then fold this into the center. Alright, so now that you have that, you want to unfold. What we're going to do now is uh, we're going to take the, you see these, uh, how there's this middle one and you have these two edges. We're going to bring this edge and align it across that edge like this. Alright, you want to do the same thing with this side, pretty much align it to that second line there. This is a lot harder when you're using the ripped side. You could use scissors if you want, I actually recommend scissors, but I'm not such of a steady hand and so scissors for me, I just cut them wildly and I can't do anything about it. Uh, yeah. So now what we want to do is unfold that. Now we have now done most of the uh, pre-creasing. It's time to do some of the modeling after a few uh, mid pre-crease modeling uh, things. Oh, no, we haven't done, sorry. So now what we want to do is we want to make another smaller part along this edge here. So we bring this down now you want to bring this entire thing up again. Flip it over. Bring this into the center. Like so. Now what I want to do is unfold and do the same thing but with this edge. So I'm bringing this into the center. Bring it like this. Overwards and back inwards. There you go. Oh, okay. So what we're going to be doing now is a small, um, medium kind of modeling, kind of still precursing. Uh, what we're going to be doing is taking this diamond. So you see a diamond that we've created using this crease, this crease, and these creases, that small diamond area here. Uh, we're going to be taking the edge of that and bring this up. So we want to take four cubes from the center. So we have the center, we have these four cubes along. So really two cubes from the center. Uh, 
what you want to do now is you want to fold these uh, cubes and then going straight down you want to bring these up into a mountain fold like so now what you want to do is uh, the inner you have to fold this up into a mountain fold until it reaches the bottom of the first cube in which we made the crease on like so over here we're going to be creating a at the bottom of that crease we're going to be making a mountain uh, valley fold downwards like so keeping these up and basically what we're going to be doing is throwing this all in so it gets easier when you try it it's okay to be a bit aggressive with it it's not too bad Put these in, bring this down, put that inwards, so it creates kind of this pattern, as you can see here. Uh, you guys will be able to get it when you guys make it, uh, it's uh, not that hard to explain. Uh, I'll show you again right after this. What I'm going to do is take it uh, four cubes here, bring it down, and then reverse fold that on the inside. And also these outer parts, make sure it's going diagonally um, to the edges as well. And then you just fold this all in. So this creates some sort of pentagon diamond shape. Uh, this part goes in like that. And you fold it in and you bring these just out like this. And boom. Now we have this. I'm gonna take a seat. My neck is killing me. Alright, so now what we want to do is we're going to be pretty much doing our last uh, pre-curse. What we're going to be doing is making a crease just along here. So uh, from there, we want to take uh, this edge and align it with this edge here. So pretty much like so. Uh, what we could do is you could take this edge and fold this. Uh, this one right here, and then so that when you see after afterwards, you can see that crease, and you just want to align it with this line here, like so. All right, so you want to keep that there. You want to do the same with the other side, but this side it's a lot easier since we could use the last side. All we have to do is just fold it like this. Pretty much, uh, you could make it a bit more aligned, like so. All right, and now we've done that. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna unfold this, and our last pre-cursing part, we're simply just gonna bring this entire flap upwards, like this, and have this edge here aligned with the crease that we just made, which is just here if you guys can see that. So, like this. Sorry, it's going to align like this. Make sure you open this up fully, and it should align to that crease that we made. All the way to here. Like so. Uh, you wanna make sure that this part is fully open because then there'll be some irrag- uh, ir I can't- I can't find the right word for it. Just- it would just be wrong, okay? If you do it like that, you have to do it the right way. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, making sure it aligns. If you do it perfectly, it should align to there, without much fuss. You want to do the same thing with the other side, but first we have to fold this down. Like so. So flip it over. Open it up and have it align with the crease that you've made before. Making sure this part's entirely open. Like this. Good, now you want to bring this down. And now we have this. 
we have now finished all of the pre uh, pre uh, creasing. All we have to do now is the modeling, and we will be done. Well, we have to add the legs afterwards, but you know what I mean. So now we want to unfold all of this. Yep, that's right. That was all pre creasing. Uh, what we're going to do now is take that diamond, yep, and uh, go one square down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this di this um, square here into the fold up here. Now from what we did before, we've made creases from here and there. We want to keep these up and have this part as like a horizon going all the way until it reaches that precurse in which this one will overlap. And this part will create into a valley fold, bringing it down. And we'll just fold these in and making sure these edges touch the second part. Like so. Now don't worry that these things are going up, they have to be like that because later we're going to fix them in the right way. Uh, so just for now all you want to do is keep it like that. Uh, it's going to be a bit regular but that's okay because we're going to be needing it in the future. Good. Now what we want to do is you will find these uh, diagonal lines. You want to really emphasize on that because you will need this in the future. And also on this side, emphasize that diagonal crease coming from the second uh, top corner. Now what I want to do is you also want to emphasize this horizontal center crease. And when it aligns there, just want to emphasize that. You also want to emphasize one last thing, and that's the creases that we made very early on at the start these diagonal creases coming from the second part here we're going to be folding those up like that so that's the kind of shape that you want uh, folding up on this side as well to get this all right so we're going to work one uh one arm at a time so these are going to be the arms by the way uh you want to create a valley fold from this second all the way down to here like so making sure that it folds down. So this will fold all the way down. Now what you want to do is that diagonal line that you want to do, you have to uh, bring that up. And this flap from this entire fl triangular flap here, you want to bring this down as well. And along this, you have to make a mountain fold like this. Now once you have here, you just bring this down. You have this edge aligned to this edge. You want to flatten this entire crease area here and this part you bring into making sure it aligns and when you fold this down this edge should align with this crease here like so it doesn't have to be perfect mind you because as long as it's symmetrical it should look good so now what we want to do is you want to fold this flap back down uh, here as you can see we have these creases along here these lines and as you can see again they do align with these um, center squares that we made in the pre um, creasing what you want to do is fold this one down onto this edge like so just make sure it's correct and make sure especially that you fold it down really hard because we're going to be using these very profusely in the next uh, few uh, folds Fold these down really strongly. Uh, next one, you want to fold this one back into the center. And fold that down strongly as well. It should all align with this center crease here. All right, so now you want to do the same uh, thing. So if you didn't catch the last one, you can now catch this one. What you want to do is take these uh, creases and with a valley fold here, bring them over like this. Now what we do is just fold these into collapse each other. This edge touch this edge, like so. And keep going until, uh, and you have this uh, crease here. Keep going until it reaches a flat point in which this just folds down, like that. So looking at it from the top, you see this. It's just that one, like that, you bring this over, like so. Uh, we can fold this in, making sure it's neat again. So now that you have that, what you want to do is along these creases here, we fold it in. So this first crease here, to that crease, like so. 
and then opening up that fold, bring that crease back inside. Like so. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to fold the arms now. So you wanna unravel these, bring these out, and seeing them from top down making it a lot easier to visualize. As you can see, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a lot of um, reverse folds. So here we go. First things first, uh, we want to create a mountain fold from the second, uh, sorry, from the first squares of the wing, basically meaning this first square here, making sure that the bottom of that is all mountain folds. This diagonal should be a valley fold. This one stays in a mountain fold. This goes down all the way where it reaches down here where it uh, goes back up and along here. So like this, fold these all. So I'm making sure all this is a mountain fold. Try just bring this entirely of this thing inwards. Now the second one here is all going to be valley folds so making sure that that goes up. Uh, this one's already a mountain fold for you so you don't have to worry about that. These creases, making sure it's all straight and nice. And if you think you have everything feel free just to pinch here and just start collapsing everything pretty much. Uh, you can use your other hand just to solve uh, these irregularities that do appear. Oh, okay, that has to go up. And make sure that the um, our one stays down. And you fold this all, and it should align neatly like this. Along, and then it just pretty much just goes straight like this like how you had it up before. You want to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to speed this up a bit more just so then you guys don't have to watch it again unless you do want to watch it again. So yeah. All right, so now that you've um, gotten all of these folds in like that, we are going to start forming the head and pretty much the body afterwards. So first one to do, you wanna fold this entire thing back and you see we have this shape here. What you want to do is take these uh, edges here and just bring them inwards like so. Pretty much making this all flat. Same with the other side it inwards. Not only does this uh, make this flat, what it does is it actually tucks these wings in so that they don't fly everywhere uh, in the model. Now what I want to do is over here we see that uh, line there. We kind of just want to fold this entire thing down like so. Good job. Now what you want to do to form the uh, final finishing of the head, you can closely you see that line and this line. You just want to open this flap up here and also open up this flap up here and that bring out you fold this one back in and it creates these so now what you want to do is you see these uh, diagonal lines here from there to there as well you want to fold these inwards like so fold that in and this and the center down here, the very back, that goes into a valley fold, looking at the back, and that's fold at the front. And you bring this down like that, and this one you just fold inwards, like so. Just pinch those in, and it should automatically go like this. 
so we can come here this is what happened uh, usually um, the mouth kind of just opens up by itself but if it hasn't just feel free to open that up and now you have the head and the arms uh, we are close to finishing actually so now what we want to do is you want to uh, this is a design feature you can do whatever you want oh I forgot to do this so now what you want to do is you want to take this entire edge here and align across here so pretty much doing this making sure that they align across here you can just pull this so that it aligns like so that just gives you a lot more freedom when it comes to shaping it same with here instead of just opening it to there you pull this until that edge aligns with it with that top edge there and now you have a lot of more freedom on where you could move the arms uh, what you want to do now is just design feature, bring those uh, out, bring these claws out basically. You could put them wherever you want, I don't really care, dab. Uh, no. just, I'm going to put them out right there because why not, doesn't really matter where, all you have to do is just fold it like this. And what you want to do now is just take that top edge and align it across that crease, just like that. You don't have to align it across the crease if you don't want to, it's just generally that's the kind of thing you want to do to make it look kind of even if you know what i mean what you want to do now is just open up the claws like so and tuck this in so just tuck it like that um it's kind of hard to explain i'll but the visual representation should be okay just open it up, you see that creases, you put those into valley folds and you open it up to there. And there you go, you have your clothes and your head. Now it's time for the body. Here is another design feature where you can put this wherever you want. I recommend putting it so that this angle here is an obtuse angle and not a cute or right angle because it kind of looks a lot better if your mantis is like that with legs a bit longer down here. Now what you want to do is unfold this. Uh, what you're going to do is you want to open up this center part here. Uh, what you're going to do is pretty much, uh, it's hard to explain. You have to bring these edges inside like this. Pretty much creating a flat kind of area. Making sure you do this right, you have uh, equals that when you fold this back inwards it should be straight so yeah pretty much from here we're just folding this upwards and inwards there you go all right so what you want to do now is uh, kind of different from what I said before these two flaps down here you want to open them up now you want to turn this side here kind of into a valley fold ish with these two opening up it's gonna be hard to explain. Basically, you just wanna pop this upwards so that uh, it kind of makes this kind of shape. You just wanna pull these sides in. It's kinda, of, you just pinch them kinda of, and you uh, bring this up until it kind of makes a resolution. So from there, you just, it's kind of hard to explain, but you'll be able to get it uh, yeah, it is, it is very hard to explain, pardon me, but basically from here, you want to bring this up, open up the sides, and pinch these a bit in to create this. Let's play around with it, you'll eventually get there if you keep trying, I feel like. Uh, so that's all I'm going to say. I'm sorry, it's, it's kind of hard to visualize it, but you just have to pinch it like that until you have this. And there you go, now you have the body of the mantis if you want to you can bring this up and just shake it around every mantis is a bit different as you could see uh, uh maybe yeah the head this, one, this one's head's bigger okay they're all different they're special and unique just like everyone else all right so now we're up to the next part what we're going to do is now use the second part to create the legs and we're going to stick them on like this 
All right, so first things first, you want to take, uh, you pretty much just want to make a square. So taking this edge, bring it over, making sure that uh, this line aligns with this one. Like so. And if you fold it down, bring this up so that it aligns with that crease, that edge, sorry. So many names. Can't remember them all. Now what you want to do is just take whatever you're cutting it with um, and pretty much just cut that to create a square. So now you have a square. Uh, you want to make a crane base basically. Um, it's uh, I've done a lot of my videos. Uh, if you do origami you should uh, know this I feel like. Uh, basically I'll just do visualizing. I won't say anything just to make it a bit quicker. All right, so now that you have the crane base, uh, what you want to do is uh, pretty much make it smaller. <laughs> so you want to take these edges and bring them into the center. Uh, I'll show you like this. So making sure that this edge should be parallel to this edge here. And you want to fold it and pretty much do it to every side pretty much. So this edge goes in there like so, edge goes in there. Like so, pretty much that this edge touches there basically, and it should be parallel, like I said. So, yeah, uh, once you have all of these sides folded, you get a swastika. Yes, <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, what you actually want to do now is you want to unfold the uh, entire thing. Uh, you pretty much want to make reverse folds on each of those small triangles that you've created. So this one goes in like so. Make sure these are out. So yeah, pretty much making a reverse fold so that when it folds back in, you get like that and it's a bit smaller. You just want to do this with every side basically. So using along those creases, bring these out. Like so. Same with this one. Sorry, <laughs> like so. And last one here. Alright, so now that you have everything done with here, we're going to cheat it one last time. I know, I'm sorry. So much cheating involved with making an origami mantis. Oh well, what I want to do is uh, cut it along the horizontals. So, like that. this and like this 
Alright, so now you have four smaller squares. What you want to do with these squares are just fold them up like how you used to do them. So, like this. You know you had to do it to them. Anyway, so yeah, pretty much just folding it like this. Using all the folds that you made last time, even the uh, reverse folds. But yeah, let's keep the reverse folds as well. Make sure that they're going in, as you can see. And that is all. You have these four mantis legs. Now you want to take your model, and you can see. Um, I'll try to tell you where to put them. So you want two legs. These two legs will be the back legs, basically. Uh, you see, if you look really closely, there's a crease, as you can see, right there. It's. Let me try to focus it in. There's a crease right there. And pretty much just want to fold it along that crease, like so. Uh, again, with this one, having it that fold right there. And make sure that they're opposites. So as you can see, these two should be cutting together. And they shouldn't be congruent, basically. They should be uh, flipped over as like a reflection, basically. So yeah, you want to make them they're symmetrical. These two are going to be the back legs. These two are going to be the front legs. You don't have to do anything to them because we want them to be really long so that they can actually stand up. Now what you want to do is you want to grab some glue tack or any sort of adhesive uh, glue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it from my camera. So uh, I don't need that much crumb. So you just want to take a small uh, bit of glue tack, not too much because you know you don't want to make it look that obvious that you're cheating if you know what I mean. Uh, take a small bit. Oh, this is this is a really stretchy glue tack. Jeez, must be a hot day today. Okay. Yeah, this is so small. What the crap? Uh, so yeah, you want to put um, them on every single part. Uh, so here we want to put the glue tack on this middle. On the inner of the fold, so like this, of the hind legs. Uh, take us a little small bit of glue tech again. Uh, no, I should, I should stop doing that. And put that on the inner of the leg. Now, you could put more if you want. I, I don't want to put too much, just so then it's not that, uh, you know, suspicious with all that uh, extra glue tech that you have uh, on the legs. But yeah, now that you have the hind legs on the inside, we're going to stick them in. Uh, you're going to put the insides of the leg on the outsides here. So that it kind of comes out like so. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you put them, it's a design feature. Just as long as the mantis can stand up when it's like that. So basically it has to be low enough, pretty much. You want to do the same thing with this one, pretty much putting it on the outside like so. Now you can look at it from like a bird's eye angle to try to get it as symmetrical as possible. Um, it's really hard to get it symmetrical, you kind of need like a lot of trial and error with it all standing up once you have all the legs in. Overall I think it's symmetrical so I'm going to keep it like that. Uh, maybe I might tuck it in a bit more actually. So now you want to take the rest of your glue tag, I'm going to split this one in half. And put it on so it doesn't really matter what side you put it on they're both the same thing so it doesn't really matter where what who when where why well it doesn't matter what but whatever uh, you want to stick these on the insides here so you see there's these flaps look closely there are these flaps here these open up actually a great amount uh, you want to stick that in there uh, supposedly, uh, kind of near where the body is, so that it kind of aligns up. Uh, just keep it like that. We'll do the same thing with the other side. Doesn't really matter where the glue, uh, which side the glue tech's on. Just make sure it's symmetrical after you have it in. So, yep. Once you stick these all in, you have an origami mantis. And if you did it right, and you made it symmetrical, it should stand. Oh no, my one doesn't stand. No, I failed. I failed my family. Failed everything. So much failures. There you go. Uh, 
it is a bit uh, irregular, I guess. It's hard to get them all to fit since, you know, you kind of cheated for it. Take a look good. But overall, you should get this uh, model. Whew. So here we have Origami Mantis, my own design. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Or yeah, just for a general support of my channel, I guess. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, I'm not going to do any art because yesterday I did some art on the Mantis and it looks absolutely horrifying. I'll show you later in this video. But overall, this is it. It's my own design. H hope you guys enjoyed. And see you later. This is the most horrifying Mantis I've ever seen. It is absolutely horrible, horrible, horrible.